Coming up next on Passion Struck, renowned physicist Richard Feynman said, I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. Have you ever felt that admitting that you were wrong was a sign of weakness? What if I told you it's actually a profound strength? Join me as we delve into the fascinating psychology behind why admitting mistakes is so challenging, yet incredibly beneficial. Discover how embracing the power of being wrong can be your gateway to greater wisdom and resilience. Welcome to Passion Struck. Hi, I'm your host, John R. Miles, and on the show, we decipher the secrets, tips, and guidance of the world's most inspiring people and turn their wisdom into practical advice for you and those around you. Our mission is to help you unlock the power of intentionality so that you can become the best version of yourself. If you're new to the show, I offer advice and answer listener questions on Fridays. We have long form interviews the rest of the week with guests ranging from astronauts to authors, CEOs, creators, innovators, scientists, military leaders, visionaries, and athletes. Now, let's go out there and become Passion struck. In a world where certainty is often celebrated, I've discovered that embracing the power of being wrong can feel daunting. Yet, what if acknowledging our mistakes and changing our minds were actually powerful steps towards personal growth and resilience? As Socrates said, the only true wisdom is knowing you know nothing. In today's episode, I will challenge the notion that being wrong is a weakness and instead highlight its profound strength. The power of being wrong significantly impacts our inner dialogue, transforming how we view ourselves as well as our journey. By embracing our mistakes, we shift from a mindset of defensiveness and self-doubt to one of openness and continuous learning. This shift in inner dialogue allows us to become more resilient and adaptable, viewing challenges as opportunities rather than threats. Today, I'm gonna to explore the psychology behind why acknowledging our errors is so difficult and the incredible benefits of doing so through the story of astronomer Edward Hubble, who revolutionized our understanding of the universe by admitting his initial theories were flawed. We'll see firsthand how embracing our mistakes can lead to groundbreaking discoveries. Additionally, I'll unpack scientific concepts like error-related negativity, the Dunning-Kruger effect, and the Benjamin Franklin effect, shedding light on the mechanisms that drive our responses to being wrong. I'll also provide four ways that you can apply this science to your own life, helping you to improve your inner dialogue and transform your approach to personal and intellectual development. Join me as I explore the power of being wrong and discover how it can lock new levels of resilience and wisdom in your life. Embracing this mindset will transform your inner dialogue, making you more open to change and ready to turn challenges into stepping stones for growth. Imagine peering through a powerful telescope, unlocking secrets that no one had ever seen before. This was the life of Edwin Hubble, a man whose discoveries would forever change our understanding of the cosmos. But what if I told you one of the most groundbreaking revelations in astronomy began with Hubble admitting that he was wrong? This is a perfect example of the power of being wrong and why changing your mind is a strength, not a weakness. Edwin Hubble, working at the Mount Wilson Observatory in California, embarked on a mission to explore distant galaxies with the 100-inch Hooker telescope. During his observations, he noticed something extraordinary. The light from these distant galaxies was redshifted, a phenomenon indicating that they were moving away from us. Even more astonishing was the pattern that he observed. The further a galaxy was, the faster it was receding. This discovery directly challenged the prevailing belief of a static universe, a concept widely accepted by the scientific community at that time. At first, Hubble himself was doubtful. The idea that the universe was expanding was almost unthinkable. With rigor, he checked and rechecked his data, aware that such a monumental shift in understanding required the utmost scrutiny. This moment of doubt is a perfect example of the power of being wrong. It shows how questioning and verifying our beliefs can lead to profound insights. After extensive analysis, Hubble confirmed his findings and formulated what we now know is Hubble's law. The observation that galaxies are moving away from us 
at speeds proportional to their distance. This revolutionary concept indicated that the universe was expanding, fundamentally altering the field of cosmology and laying the groundwork for the Big Bang Theory. Hubble's story is not just about scientific breakthrough. It's about the courage to accept that his initial belief was incorrect and to embrace the new evidence that was before him. This willingness to change his mind led to a deeper understanding of the cosmos and solidified his legacy as a pioneering scientist. The lesson that we learn from Hubble's journey is powerful. Admitting when we're wrong and learning from our mistakes can lead to extraordinary growth and discovery. Hubble's intellectual humility and dedication to the truth allowed him to make one of the most significant contributions in modern science. This story perfectly illustrates why changing your mind is a strength, not a weakness. Next, let's delve into the science and psychology behind why being wrong is beneficial. Understanding the psychological mechanisms that make it so challenging to admit our mistakes can help us embrace this discomfort and foster personal and intellectual growth. Understanding the benefits of being wrong requires that I delve into different psychological mechanisms that explain why acknowledging our mistakes can lead to significant growth. Today, I'm going to explore four key concepts, error-related negativity, or ERN, the Dunning-Kruger effect, the Benjamin Franklin effect, and identity protection. When we recognize that we've made an error, our brains generate an error-related negativity signal. This signal is a sharp electrical wave that can be detected through EEGs and occurs within 100 milliseconds of making a mistake. The error-related negativity signal is believed to originate from the anterior cingulate cortex, a region of the brain associated with decision-making, error detection, and emotional regulation. The significance of ERN lies in its role in learning and behavioral adjustment. Psychologist Jason Moser, an expert in this area, explains that ERN is a neural response to errors that is critical in learning and adapting to our environment. When we acknowledge our mistakes, our brains activate regions involved with learning and memory, such as the prefrontal cortex. This activation helps us to refine our decision-making processes and to improve future performance. As psychologist Daniel Kahneman explains, true learning is impossible without feedback. And recognizing mistakes is a critical part of that feedback loop. This neural mechanism ensures that we are continuously improving our judgments and actions, making the process of admitting mistakes integral to personal growth. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias that leads people with limited knowledge or competence in a domain to overestimate their own abilities. Named after psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger, this phenomenon underscores the importance of self-awareness and intellectual humility. Dunning and Kruger demonstrated that individuals with lower competence levels not only perform poorly, but are also unaware of their deficiencies. By recognizing our limitations and mistakes, we can counteract this bias and promote a more accurate self-assessment. As Dunning aptly stated, the first rule of the Dunning-Kruger Club is you don't know you're in the Dunning-Kruger Club. Admitting our errors is crucial for gaining a realistic understanding of our abilities. This humility fosters a growth mindset, as described by psychologist Carol Dweck, who emphasizes the value of embracing challenges and learning from failure. The Benjamin Franklin effect, named after Benjamin Franklin, posits that doing a favor for someone can increase our liking for them. Similarly, admitting when we are wrong can increase other people's trust and respect in us. Franklin once said, he that has once done you a kindness will be more ready to do you another than he who you himself have obliged. By admitting mistakes, we demonstrate humility and openness, which can foster stronger, more authentic relationships. Research by William Swam and Brett Pilam suggests that individuals who openly acknowledge their errors are perceived as more trustworthy and competent by their peers. This effect underscores the social benefits of embracing our mistakes and the positive impact it can have on our relationships. And then lastly, there's identity protection. Our beliefs are often tied to our identity and sometimes admitting that we are wrong can feel like a threat to our sense of self. However, embracing this discomfort can lead to more authentic and lasting changes. Social psychologist Claude Steele's work on self-affirmation theory suggests that when individuals reflect on their core values, they are more open to acknowledging and correcting their mistakes without feeling threatened. This process involves recognizing that our self-worth is solely not dependent on being right but on our ability to learn and grow. By decoupling our beliefs from our identity, we can approach errors 
with a more open and adaptive mindset. As Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman said, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. Understanding the science and psychological mechanisms behind why it's so difficult to admit when we're wrong reveals profound insights into human cognition and behavior. From the neural signals that drive our learning processes to the social dynamics that shape our relationships, acknowledging mistakes plays a crucial role in personal development. By understanding and embracing concepts like error-related negativity, the Dunning-Kruger effect, the Benjamin Franklin effect, and identity protection, we can harness the power of being wrong to unlock new levels of wisdom and resilience in our lives. As we continue to explore the power of being wrong, it's essential to remember that changing our minds is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our ability to grow and adapt. Just as Edwin Hubble's willingness to embrace his errors revolutionized our understanding of the universe, your openness to learning from mistakes can lead to profound personal transformations. Now that we've explored the profound benefits of embracing the power of being wrong and why changing your mind is a strength, not a weakness, let's discuss how you can apply these insights into your own life. Here are four major takeaways to help you harness the power of being wrong and foster personal and intellectual growth. One of the most transformative steps that you can take is to reframe failure as a learning opportunity. Mistakes are not endpoints, but starting points for growth and discovery. Renowned psychologist Albert Bandura, known for his work on social learning theory, emphasized that failure is not a definitive end, but an instructive guide. By viewing errors as valuable lessons, you can shift from fearing failure to embracing it as a crucial element of your journey towards mastery. Albert Einstein famously said, a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. This quote highlights the importance of mistakes in the learning process. Every error provides feedback that can be used to refine and improve our skills and knowledge. When you encounter a setback, instead of seeing it as a defeat, ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? Each mistake becomes a stepping stone to deeper understanding and greater wisdom. This mindset not only mitigates the fear of failure, but also encourages a positive approach to personal development. Intellectual humility involves recognizing the limits of your knowledge and being open to the possibility of being wrong. This trait is crucial for continuous improvement. Admitting that you don't have all the answers opens the door for new information and perspectives. As philosopher Bertrand Russell said, the problem with the world is the stupid are cocksure and the intelligent are full of doubt. Admitting that you don't know everything allows you to remain curious and open-minded, always ready to learn and grow. Embracing intellectual humility means accepting being wrong is part of the learning process. It fosters a mindset where you are continuously seeking new information and perspectives, which is vital for overcoming challenges and to achieving long-term success. The third step we can take is to practice radical openness. Engage in conversations and interactions with the intent to learn not to win. Radical openness means being genuinely receptive to changing your mind when presented with compelling evidence or arguments. This practice encourages a culture of mutual learning and respect. Carl Rogers, a pioneering psychologist in the field of humanistic psychology, believed that the only way to understand someone is to listen to them with an open mind. Similarly, psychologist Adam Grant in his book, Think Again, emphasizes the value of rethinking and being open to changing our mind. He writes, a hallmark of an open mind is not letting your ideas become your identity. In discussions, prioritize understanding over convincing. Ask questions, listen actively, and consider different viewpoints. When you encounter new information that contradicts with your beliefs, instead of dismissing it, take time to investigate and understand it. This approach not only broadens your perspectives, but also strengthens your relationships by demonstrating respect and empathy for others' viewpoints. And last, celebrate corrections. Recognizing and correcting errors should be celebrated as milestones of growth. Admitting when you are wrong is not a sign of weakness, but a demonstration of strength and adaptability. Each correction is an opportunity to improve and to refine your understanding. Brene Brown, a research professor and author, highlights the importance of vulnerability and growth. She states, vulnerability is not winning or losing. It's having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. Celebrating corrections can create a positive feedback loop, encouraging continuous learning and self-improvement. Acknowledge and reward yourself when you correct a mistake. 
Reinforce the behavior of seeking and embracing the truth. This practice helps build resilience and confidence, enabling you to face future challenges with a proactive and positive attitude. Now that we've explored these transformative takeaways, you might wonder how they all tie together to foster growth and resilience. Each of these principles, reframing failure as learning, cultivating intellectual humility, Practicing radical openness and celebrating corrections provides a unique approach to embracing the power of being wrong. Embracing the power of being wrong is a counterintuitive yet profound way to foster growth. It aligns perfectly with the ethos of becoming passion struck. At its core, becoming passion struck is about an intense, almost inexplorable drive to mold one's life in the pursuit of becoming an ideal self. This drive stems from a deep-seated passion that goes beyond mere ambition. It's a relentless quest for growth, impact, and fulfillment. It's the kind of passion that transforms obstacles into stepping stones and challenges into opportunities for growth. When you embrace the possibility of being wrong, you open yourself up to continuous learning and self-improvement. This willingness to admit mistakes and learn from them is essential for the transformative mindset required to achieve a passion-struck state. It's about rewiring how we feel, act, and think, shifting from a fear of failure to viewing errors as opportunities to evolve and improve. By acknowledging and correcting our mistakes, we align more closely with our core identity and values propelling us towards a higher purpose. As you continue your journey, remember that being wrong is not a sign of weakness, but a powerful tool of growth. Embrace the discomfort, learn from your errors, and celebrate the journey of continuous improvement. This mindset will transform how you approach challenges and bring you closer to living a passion-struck life driven by purpose and fulfillment. Thank you for those who wrote in this week and especially those who joined me today. I encourage you to take these lessons to heart and apply them in your daily life. If you have any thoughts or stories to share, please join the conversation on social media using the hashtag PassionStruck. Before we wrap up, I'm excited to share a sneak peek of our next episode of PassionStruck. I'll be joined by Chris Kenobi, a distinguished physician, ophthalmologist, and nutrition researcher. Join us as we delve into Dr. Kenobi's groundbreaking research that compellingly demonstrates how vegetable oils, high in omega-6 fats, drive numerous chronic diseases. Discover the powerful impact of the ancestral diet and learn how to transform your health by making simple yet profound changes. The industrial seed oils are what I call chronic metabolic biological poisons. In short, they're poisoned, plain and simple. And they behave in our bodies very much like arsenic would. And there's many parallels because anything that causes oxidation is like we're rusting inside, devastating to every cell and every organ that it comes in contact with in, when it's in significant amounts. And anything, any amount of vegetable oils is significant. We really shouldn't have any. These are not natural foods. These are the most processed foods that there is available, the most processed food component. And if you look at the quantity of processed food ingredients, vegetable oils are the leading caloric component of processed foods, the leading caloric component. Remember that we rise by lifting others, so share this show with those that you love and care about. And if you found today's episode useful on the power of keeping an open mind, then definitely share it with someone you know who could use the advice that I gave here today. In the meantime, do your best to apply what you hear on the show so that you can live what you listen. Until next time, go out there and become passion struck.